Our scripture today is taken from the gospel according to Mark, the first chapter beginning at the first verse. Hear the word of God. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins and people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. By your grace and through your mercy, we pray, O Lord, that you will allow these words to come to point to the word just read and to the word made flesh in Jesus the Christ, for we pray this in his name. Amen. There are some moments that happen when I am glad that I do not have a camera. Today I realize that if you don't catch it on your smartphone, it doesn't mean it happened. But sometimes something really does happen that you can't quite catch on film. They say that a picture is worth a thousand words, but sometimes there are experiences that are worth more than a thousand words. Sometimes there's just too much going on that leaves this indelible impression upon you that you will never shake. Something like that happened to me many years ago, one rainy day when I was walking up through Midtown Manhattan. It was early December and I was walking up 6th Avenue in the rain and there she was. She stood no more than five feet tall and she wore reindeer antlers. She wore reindeer antlers and she had a shiny red painted nose. She stood out as much as one can stand out in New York City. She stood behind a table that had a sign explaining that she was from some sort of homeless coalition in New York. And I knew of her presence long before I saw her. As I walked up 6th Avenue, I could hear her voice. Her refrain was six words, make a difference, feed the homeless, feed the homeless, make a difference. It was clear that she had not gotten her MBA in marketing. But I was struck that on this weekend, two weeks into Advent, in the pouring down rain, I was hearing a voice in the wilderness. And as we approached, the voice grew stronger. Feed the homeless, make a difference. She grabbed my curiosity, so when I got to the corner, I was eager to find her in the midst of the pushing and shoving fur frock shoppers and theater goers. Finding her, I saw the antlers and the red nose and on her table, a big bucket into which people were encouraged to throw a dollar or two or more. Make a difference, feed the homeless. Most looked at her and quickly turned away. Some paused and reached for a bill or two and made their contribution. All of us from underneath our umbrellas wondered, why is this reindeer woman standing here in the pouring rain? But as soon as we asked the question, we knew the answer. It was the same answer as why she came to the corner in the first place. The same answer as to why her voice cried out in the crowd. There was a cause that had consumed her, a passion that had, could not be dampened by the precipitation. There was an injustice that needed justice. There was a need that needed tending to. And when your life gets taken over by something like this, you're bound to start acting a little strange. <laughs> you're likely to start doing some odd things. Chances are your oddness is going to stand out. Advent began for me that year on that rainy afternoon. 
because Reindeer Lady taught me something about Advent, and that is that Advent is for oddballs. It's true, right? Advent is filled with all sorts of odd characters. You don't get four verses into the story of Jesus told by Mark before you meet oddball character number one, John the Baptist. Dunking people in the Jordan River, shouting at the religious authorities and calling them snakes, uniquely attired in camel's hair and a leather belt, eating locust and wild honey. Sounds pretty strange. Not the kind of person you would hire to promote your big product. But there he is, old oddball John, out there in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, oddball number one. The list goes on, an impregnated teenager who claims that the child conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Oh, how does she know? An angel told her, right. Her fiancé on the verge of dismissing her out of, her, out of his life for such a cockamamie story, but all of a sudden he decides to hang in there, stay with her, and when asked why, he says that an angel told him, right. <laughs> Shepherds wandering the streets of Bethlehem looking for a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a cattle trough. Lying where? Oh, in a cattle trough, in a manger. Oh, who told you of such a thing? Oh, an angel told us, right. Wise men from who knows where, out east somewhere, following some bright star right into the, right into the courts of crazy old King Herod, and, ask, and they ask crazy, crazy old King Herod where the new king is to be born. Everyone knows you never ask the sitting king where the new <laughs> king is to be born. But that's what the wise men do. Seems kind of odd. Advent, it seems, is for oddballs. That is, if what you mean by oddball is a person who's so convicted, so convinced, so impassioned, so consumed by what they know is true, by what they know is to come, by what they know deep down in their heart that they cannot help but act like it. Advent is for oddballs. Now, that may not sound like good news for us because if there's one thing that you and I do not want to be, we do not want to be odd. We'd be glad to be a lot of things, but we do not want to be odd. What we want to be is we want to be normal. We just want to be normal. Maybe our greatest hope just to be normal. Parents want their kids to be what? Normal. What parent would find it good news if at the parent-teacher conference you're told that your child is not normal? Odd is not good news. And yet right from the start, right when the good news gets told that the Messiah is coming, people start doing odd things. They start acting odd as if things are not normal. Keep reading the story of the gospel, keep reading into the life of Christ, and it's just one odd thing after another, one odd person after another, fishermen turning into spiritual giants, tax collectors leaving their professions and giving their money away, lepers being cleansed, 5,000 getting fed from five loaves, dead people getting raised, blind people seeing, tombstones getting rolled away, all of it odd. Because this is what happens when God chooses to enter the world. And isn't that what Advent is? Advent is the season of waiting and thinking and pondering and imagining God, the great God of heaven, the one who sets the universe into its order and orbit, God, the one who breathed life into our souls and hearts, God, the one who thought it was a good idea that you and everything else existed, that this God chose and is choosing to come still into the world in the flesh and spirit of one named Jesus Christ. Advent is the season when we ponder the good news that God has landed. God has set up shop. God is establishing his kingdom in the world. And if that's true, if it's really true that this world that has its fair share of problems, this world that seems like it's going to hell in a handbasket, this world where there are wars and rumors of wars, this world that has been invaded by the good God of heaven, and this good God is seeking to set up shop and advance his kingdom. This God who so loved the world that he sent his only son. Well, then, we who would dare to believe something like that, well, then, we've just got no choice but to be a bit strange. 
love your enemies, Jesus said. Forgive 70 times 7, Jesus said. If you're asked to go one mile, go another mile, he said. And when he said those things, doggone it, they thought he was odd. But isn't that going to happen when people like you and me and John the Baptist and Reindeer Lady start thinking and believing that God really has invaded and that there really is a mission to turn the world around and upside down? Isn't it bound to happen that when we become really convinced about this new reality that we're going to start doing some strange things, we're going to start going against the grain of what the world thinks is normal because what the world thinks is normal is what you find on the front page of the newspaper. What the world, what you think is, what the thinks is, what the world thinks is normal is what you find on your favorite television news program. What the world thinks is normal is what you find them talking about on the radio talk show. God says to you and me, let's not be normal. Let's be odd. Let's just be oddballs. When I was a youth director, one of the biggest nights of the year was the annual Random Acts of Kindness Night when we broke up into groups and went around town doing random acts of kindness, doing nice things to complete strangers. A dozen donuts left at the police station, paying for the tank of gas of a guy who just put gas into his car at the gas station, delivering cars to the nursing home, even though we didn't know anybody there, carrying someone's groceries out to their car. Random acts of kindness, gestures of unsolicited grace, at the risk of what? At the risk of appearing a little not normal. But that's the kind of thing that happens when kindness and goodness enter the world. It's going to seem a little strange. Tom Ellerby, that's the name I'm giving him, was an elder in the church where I grew up outside of Detroit. He traveled the freeways of Detroit back and forth to work and he began to notice how awful the shoulders and medians of the freeways were beginning to look. Litter was collecting and there were bent hubcaps and rusted mufflers and trash bags and you name it. And it was just looking pretty awful. So Tom began writing to the authorities and sending letters to the editor. No action except to say that there wasn't money in the budget to clean the highway. So Tom decided he was just gonna do something himself. So, with a pickup truck on Saturdays, he would drive down the shoulder of the road on Interstate 94 and Interstate 75 and start picking up trash. People started noticing this odd man picking up freeway trash. They began to inquire. They wrote letters of appreciation to the paper. The Detroit Free Press put them on the front page. And then, of course, the police got hold of it and arrested him. <laughs> Can't do that kind of thing on the highway. It's not safe. When they let him out of jail, he went back and started doing the same thing again. People started honking their horns in support. They wrote letters to the city council, and sure enough, after a couple more arrests of this oddball, they put money in the budget to start cleaning the highways. Amazing what a little strangeness can do. On the front of your bulletin, there's a picture of a wood duck. You've seen wood ducks around. Male wood ducks are just beautiful creatures. They are striking in their appearance, but as ducks go, they're kind of odd, right? They're odd ducks. <laughs> they don't look like regular ducks. The duck world, we're talking to each other. I wonder if maybe they say about these wood ducks, well, there's an odd duck. <laughs> but odd ducks can be beautiful. Tom Ellerby's can be beautiful. John the Baptist can be beautiful. Reindeer Lady can be beautiful. Sometimes oddness can be beautiful. So I wonder what these days can be. I'm wondering, I've been wondering it ever since I saw Reindeer Lady. Feed the homeless, make a difference. A voice crying in the wilderness. Of course, we all want a normal Christmas, whatever that might mean. But in a world that's going to hell, maybe normal isn't going to cut it. Normal isn't going to house any more homeless. Normal isn't going to feed any more people. Normal isn't going to save any more souls. Normal isn't going to prevent any more wars. So I have an idea. What if you and I gave ourselves the permission 
not to be normal. We'll start with Advent. Maybe go through the Christmas season. Maybe go through Lent. Maybe go for the rest of our lives. Paul said, we are fools for the sake of Christ. How about we give ourselves permission just to be strange? How about we surprise people with unsolicited acts of grace? How about we forgive someone who needs your forgiveness, engage a stranger, befriend an underling at work, visit a nursing home even though you don't know anybody there? Skip the mall and tell everyone on your Christmas list that the gifts this year that they were hoping for have now made it their way to someone who might not have any gifts at all. What might it look like for us to act a little strange? Because God is coming. This is what Advent is all about, waiting for the arrival of God, waiting for the arrival of the one we know has already come, who's already landed. And when God lands, there is one thing we know for sure, things will seem strange. Things will seem a little odd. And not a second too soon, because it sure does seem like the world could stand a few more oddballs. <laughs>